Good afternoon guys, this is Chad from Casting the Deep. Today I'm doing an oil change on my wife's 2006 Yamaha FX Cruiser. I change it probably two or three times a year, so or summer. I change it more than regular and I'll use... Now the thing I use is I don't actually use the Yamaha change kit for this because where I live, you either have to order it or you have to drive 51 miles one way, so over 100 miles one way to get to get the oil change. So what I use is, uh, I cross-reference the number. I use, I don't know, this is what I use. It's a K&N filter. Costs more than a Yamaha filter. It's a K&N 303, if y'all can see that. I use, this is, the, this is the filters I use. And what I like about these filters is all it need, all you need to get it off is this right here, a 17 millimeter wrench. It's these K&N fields have it where a wrench is on the back so you can put a wrench on it. Easy off, easy on, no fuss, no muss. K&N's already come pre -loop. the seals come pre lubed but I still pre lube uh, the inside. And the oil I use, which I've had a good look, but now I change my oil three or four times a season because I, I fish in these with salt water. So they stay in the salt water all the time. This is what I use. So, yeah, I know, it ain't jet ski oil, but it's motorcycle oil. And if you ever crunk one of these up, they sound like a detuned motorcycle. Anyway, super bike or so. But anyway, I'll turn it back on in a minute. And I live in South Georgia, so if y'all see me flicking my fan like that, it's because of these darn gnats. If you ever come to South Georgia, you'll know what I'm talking about. And anyway, give me just a few minutes and let me get everything together. And we'll do it. But the good thing about this oil change is it only takes two tools. It takes a 17 millimeter ridge. Print and uh, waste your money. Don't waste your money on them pumps. Get you one of these. Amazon, I think it was $24. Electric pump. It makes it so easy and so quick. All right, guys, let me shut you off. And when I get started, I'll, I'll get you back on. All right, guys, I'm back. So, what I've done is I went and got me some paper towels and some towels because I don't like the bottom of my skis or my skis dirty on the inside because that way I can see if something's tore up. I try to take very good care of my skis and I'm a little over careful with them. But uh, you can see my wife's, I bought this ski used and the people that had it, they scratched it up. She loves it, but I, I, you know, I told her after the season I was gonna have to fix the scratches on it, but didn't run when I bought it. I got a good deal on it, so I fixed it, but I've got it clean, pretty well cleaned up on, for, for 2006, you can see I've got it pretty well cleaned up on the inside, I mean, that way I know if anything's wrong. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started. I didn't tell you, the, the other reason I use the K&N filters is because what I run into being in the salt water, and I, nothing bad about Yamaha, but, Lord, but their oil filters rust around the edge. I filled this up with oil. Rust right around the edge here. I haven't had that problem with the K&Ns. I don't know if what kind of powder coating or paint they use, and I didn't like that because it gets oil leaks and all that, and I didn't want it. So I'm gonna put you down into the ski for a minute and show you show you K and N so it's gonna get a little dark. So that's the filter right there. Hope you can see it with my big my arm in the way. And that's the filter right there, and you can see when well, I'm looking, I can't see real good till I get it out. But I don't see any corrosion on that filter. And you can see my ski, I try to keep it pretty clean. So that's down in, in, in the floor and all that. I wipe them down and wash them every time we ride. All right, so I'm going to try to set you up here where you can see. And I'm going to see if I can get started on this video. It's a little shaky, I know. It's awesome. I'm just propping it up. Hopefully that will be So let me figure out a way to hold you so I don't make you drunk watching this video. I got a chest protector, but I actually wanted you to see. You know what? I probably, I'm just going to try to hold you because I don't really have nothing out here. So if you've never changed the oil in a Yamaha before, it's very simple, especially, especially with the k and filter. So that thing wiped off. This is where you pump the oil out. And I use an electric pump. The hardest thing about this is keeping the darn hose in this bucket without it pouring out all over the ground. But you'll see, this right here, the electric pump is the ticket if you don't have one of these. 
to getting your oils out of your ski. It makes it so simple, man. I make mean, it so, so simple. Make sure it's all the way down in the bottom. And then turn it on. There comes the oil. That's it. In the bucket. Hope it is dry. Hole. You don't even sweat doing this. <laughs> While I'm in here, I like to look at other things. Once I get the stuff down and do that, then I'll take the oil filter off of it and we'll pull it out and I'll look at it. So I can look at it and I'll show you to see if it's rusting or anything. Once I do that, I mean, ain't no use for y'all listening to that pump, but I'll get you back once I get you, once I get it all pumped out. Okay, we're back. I got all the oil pumped up, and I'll show you what we're doing. So you can see it's done. I didn't know y'all. I know y'all didn't want to hear that thing running and buzzing in your ear. So this I got to get cleaned up, but I'm keeping in the bucket, and that's the oil. But as you can see on the side of the bucket, I marked one quart, two quarts, two and a half, almost two and a half quarts of oil came out of the ski. And now we're gonna take the oil filter off of it, loosen up the oil filter and see maybe, hopefully we won't lose too much oil. But I'm hoping I can get that down in there where y'all can, where y'all can see. Uh, let's, let's see if I can set it where y'all can see me doing the oil filter. That may be pretty good if I don't knock it off in there. So now we're going to get down here. And this is what I like about the K&N filter. It's undone that easy. It just makes it so much easier to do. Turn loose and get off. Because you're not fighting trying to get it up in there. I'm going to get my arm out. I think that might be loose enough. So I can get my arm up in there and twist it out. Oh yeah. Hopefully I won't lose too much, get too much oil in the ski. You don't think that bolt's long until you start trying to speed it up to keep from getting oil all in your ski. All right, so there we go. All right, so that, all right, so let's pull it out. Okay. So I'm going to set you right here so we can look at the oil filter. This is the oil filter I just took off. And let's see what kind of rust, if we have any rust on it. Alright. See, it's, it's nasty. I mean, the oil is ready for oil change. That, that actually looks pretty good. I might have a just a little bit of color here. Just a small bit. But as you can see the other, it don't even look like it's been in the ski. That's what I like about the K&M filter. Hmm. All right, so let's get the other filter on. The other thing I like is the K&Ns come, this, the rubber O-ring comes pre-lube. And I do fill this full of oil and let it sink in. So it's not, I don't like doing a dry start. So I do fill this full of oil, but you can see it sucks all the oil up, sucks it up. I could put more in there, but I don't want to spill it all in my ski when I'm putting it together. All right, so I'm gonna go in and wipe off where I got the other one off so it's clean. I'll be right back with you in just a second. I guess you can say your point of view. Fuel 
quick and easy job if you've never changed your oil on a Yamaha. So I don't see why you would want to take it to a dealer. I took my CD to the dealer and they did the oil change on it. Because it, it, it's still on the warning. It cost me over $200 for oil change on the CD. They also, they also cleared all the, the service on with the buds and all that. So I guess they did a little more, but still that's hooking it to a computer. All right, so we got that. Now let me go wipe the oil off the bottom of it. My wife likes her ski to run really good. She don't like no trouble. So to keep her safe out there in the ocean with me, I try to keep it as serviced as best I can. All right, so now let's see how much oil we dropped on the rag when I pull this out. Make sure it didn't get no oil. Let's make sure. Let's see if we got any in the bottom. Let's clean it out. So we know for sure it's clean. All right. Get back up top. Let's see how much oil. Oil we lost. Well, that much. Not a lot. So let's see, did it get all inside? Not a lot. Not a whole bunch. Let's see if we get the flashlight and look, see if we got any standing oil down there, because if we do, we're going to wipe it up. No. Looks like it got it pretty good. That's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. So, so you can see it's pretty simple to change the oil on a Yamaha FX Cruiser 140. Now, I do use the k and filter. I'm not telling anybody to use it. And, you know, it's my own choice. I said I'm not responsible if something happens to your skis. I just told you what I use, what I like to use. You know, it's just just a, a tip that I did but it's it's nothing that you don't have to go by I'm sure I'm gonna get some res, uh, response where the oil is not made from marine and that's okay you're right it ain't you know because it don't have the additives and the protectors of the marine that the marine oil does and that's fine with me because I changed my oil, oil so many times this summer on, on my jet skis I actually change them oh I think this is the fourth fourth oil change on this ski this summer so we, you know, we run them pretty good in the ocean. So, so uh, I'm not really worried about the contaminants and all that. It gets in them and it don't do. So, but that's okay. If you got a comment, love to hear it. I always love comments. It gives me something to work towards the next time. So, all right, I'm gonna finish up the oil change, put uh, putting the oil in, and once I get it in there and all that and fire it up, then I'll come back to you. All right. Alright guys, so the oil change is now complete on the ski. And uh, I'm gonna crank I'm gonna fire it up and run it for a few minutes so we can check the oil in it. But super easy. And it's a lot cheaper than going to the dealer, my word. I know a lot of people get likes to go to the dealer because they don't want to take the time to do it, but it's super fast, super quick. So let's go ahead and fire it up. into it all I want to do is get the oil circulate in it uh, so and then we'll wait we'll wait 30 seconds or so to check it I know I had another problem with the ski but I don't know if y'all notice these latches right here they break my wife we was going riding and my wife broke so I didn't have time I don't have time to order one so as you can see it's back together it's not pretty but I took my heat gum and, and melted it. It, it. it broke right along where the rod goes in. So what I done is I heated both sides up with my heat gun and pressed them back together and used a screwdriver to mold it. So, so far it's holding and it latches. So I don't know how long it's going to think. That was just a little quick trip and on the spot. If yours breaks, you can get it fixed. Keep it from 
so you can get out back on the water without the door slamming all over the place. All right, well, that's about all it is to oil change. I guess I'll see y'all next time.